Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on solving systems of equations by substitution. Now let's get started. Before we move on to the steps, I want to talk to you for just a moment about equations that have more than one variable that you need to solve. If you have one equation that has only one variable, then all you need is that one equation and you can solve for that variable. If you have an equation with two variables, then you would actually need two equations to solve for each variable. If you had an equation with three variables, then guess what? You actually would need three equations to solve for each variable. And that pattern follows. If you had an equation with five variables, you would actually need five equations to solve for each variable. In this lesson, we will only be solving a system of two equations. So let's move on and start with the steps. There are about five steps for solving systems of equation by substitution. Step number one, look for an equation with a coefficient of one for either of the variables. I will be using these two equations to be used as my system of equations to show you the steps. In the first equation, I can see that I have a positive 1 that's my coefficient for x. If I look at my second equation, I have a negative 1 for the coefficient of y. So I'm going to choose the first equation. After you've chosen your equation, you can move on to step 2, which is to isolate the single variable. In order to isolate x, all I have to do is subtract both sides by 2y. And that will give me x equals negative 2y plus 10. In my example, I did solve for y, but it's two steps to solve for y. So I would encourage you to pick the equation that has the positive 1 value. Now before we move to the third step, I want to talk to you about what if you do not have any equations where the coefficient is 1. If that is the case, then you would just pick the variable that you want to isolate and solve for that variable. Now let's move on to step 3, which is to substitute the expression of the single variable into the second equation. So looking back at step 2, I isolated x and I got this expression, x is equal to negative 2y plus 10. Well, if x is equal to this, then it means that I could substitute this expression for the x value in the other equation. So it will look like this. I start out with 3, which is the first coefficient in the other, in the other equation. And instead of saying 3 times x, I say 3 times this expression that's equal to x. So 3 times negative 2y plus 10. Then I bring down the rest of that original equation, minus y equals 9. Now I can move to the fourth step, which is to solve for the variable y. In our example, y equals 3. Now we can move on to the fifth step, which is to substitute the found variable into an original equation and solve. And then you will state your answer as an ordered pair. Well, our found variable was y equals 3. So I can take that 3 and I can substitute it for y in one of the original equations. And I'm going to choose the first equation. So I have x plus instead of 2 times y, it's 2 times 3. So x plus 2 times 3 equals 10. And then when I do the steps to solve for x, I know that x equals 4. And so I would write my, ordered, my answer as an ordered pair, 4, 3. Now let's do an example together. We have the equations y equals 3 and 2y plus x equals 3. In this example, y is already isolated, and we know that y equals 3. So we can just substitute 3 for the y in the second equation. 
So we can say 2 times 3. So let's do that. I have 2 and I'm going to substitute the 3 plus x equals 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus x is equal to 3. And now I just subtract 6 from both sides and I have x equals negative 3. Before we state our answer as an ordered pair, I think it's a good idea to always check your work. So I take my 3 that I said y was equal to, I'm going to take my negative 3, which I have said x is equal to, I'm going to substitute them both in and see if it makes the equation true. So let's do that. We have 2 times 3, that's what y equals, plus negative 3. Negative 3 is what we said x equals, and it should equal positive 3. So 2 times 3 is 6, and if you add a negative number, it's like subtracting that number. So 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. So yes, it checks off, so we know those are two solutions, and now we can state it as an ordered pair. Negative 3 is our x value, and 3 is our y value. So what does this mean graphically? Well, if you were to graph each of these equations, these linear equations, they should be two lines that would intersect each other at this particular point. This would be their point of intersection, negative 3, 3. Now let's go on and do another example. Here we have two equations. Our first one is x equals 6 minus y, and our second one is 3y equals negative 2x plus 2. Since the x is already isolated, why don't we use that expression of 6 minus y to substitute for the x value in our other equation? So let's get started. Okay, my other equation is 3y. So I'm going to put 3y is equal to negative 2 and instead of saying negative 2 times x, it's negative 2 times the expression that equals x, which is 6 minus y. And then I will finish off the equation with the plus 2. Now that my equation only has one variable, I can solve for that variable. So first, I'm going to write 3y equals, and now I'm going to do my distribution. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12 and negative 2 times negative y would be plus 2y. And then I'm going to bring down the plus 2 because I haven't done anything with that yet. Next, I'm going to get my y's together, so I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides of the equation, and that would give me 1y is equal to negative 12 plus 2. And then y equals, and what is negative 12 plus 2? Negative 10. Now I can take this negative 10 and I can plug it in for y in one of the equations. And I'm going to choose the easier one. So I'm going to, let me kind of make some room here. Whoops, excuse me. I'm going to say x is equal to 6 minus negative 10. Okay. Well, what is 6 minus negative 10? Well, that'd be 6 plus 10, so x is equal to 16. Now that I have both my answers, I want to check my work before I state my answer as an ordered pair. So I'm going to go in the second equation, and I'm going to say um, I have 3, and instead of y, it's going to be times negative 10. And that should equal, sometimes I put a question mark because I'm not sure yet, but that should equal negative 2 times 16 plus 2. Now I can simplify. 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. And negative 2 times 16 is negative 32 plus 2. And negative 32 plus 2 is negative 30. So yes. Uh, my answers of y equals negative 10 and x equals 16 is correct. So now I'm ready to state my answer as an ordered pair. My x coordinate or x value is 16 
and my y value is negative 10. So there's the answer. I hope this video has helped you understand how to solve systems of equations by using substitution. And I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.